The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. And a very good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me once again on Get Real. This time around, Get Real Extra. Get Real Extra is on air, which means the panel is back. Uh, I'm now joined by Charendra Chandrasena, the chief editor at the Morning Newspaper. Lini Fernando, uh, municipal councillor from the Samadhi Janabalavi, and also Chris Balthasar, uh, uh, another municipal councillor from the Sri Lanka Pudijana Perimuna. Welcome. Uh, good to see you guys. Health, uh, healthy and, and safe. Uh, um, once again, uh, welcome to the program. So there is nothing else to discuss tonight. Uh, you know, main event that has been occurring in this country is pretty much COVID-19, uh, the third wave in full swing. What the government is doing, what the authorities are doing, is it working? Are we looking at uh, uh, India-like situation? Uh, these are the key questions. Uh, that we have, are we on par towards recovery? Uh, we had a good run on the first wave. Second wave also we managed. Third wave seems to be um, not so much. Uh, Lehini, I would like to start with you. What do you think, uh, you know, uh, one of the, the uh, efforts that the health authorities are trying to do is to uh, limit the movement, hoping that this would not uh, escalate towards level that they cannot uh, handle right now. Uh, uh, what do you think about their efforts? Yeah, so uh, f first of all, we, sh we need to commend the frontline workers who are actually working so hard, risking their lives, I mean, amidst of all this political uh, drama, I would say, that is happening in the country, uh, where we see the government officials, the local councillors, where the health officials are stuck, I would say, in between, trying to uh, execute this vaccination drive. I think uh, one of the, if I'm to say, one of the failures that uh, happened to this country is that we didn't... Uh, uh, start this vaccination drive as early as possible. Had we done that, uh, the situation today would have been somewhat different because uh, high-risk individuals should have been identified. There should have been a priority list on who should have been vaccinated and that, that could have been a very focused, continuous drive. But what, what we see right now is the vaccination drive happening haphazardly in certain areas. It's happening in certain areas. It's not happening. And uh, have we identified the risk areas? The risk areas should be vaccinated first. Then risk groups should be vaccinated first. Uh, we saw initially there was a circular that went above 60 needs to be vaccinated, then it came to 30 and 60. But when you go to vaccination centers, you see people of all age groups being vaccinated. And uh, I can say from my experience at the local council, there is firefighting happening between the local council mayors and the Ministry of Health, uh, the inability to work together. Then the government uh, not being able to put down like a particular plan on how many vaccine, vaccines are being brought down. So we see massive queues, people, uh, about 2,000 people lined up, but the most officials saying for that day we have only 1,000 vaccines. So actually, when you look at this whole thing in perspective, uh, I, as a Sri Lankan, I feel very sorry, very sad situation about the country and uh, and also about the present administration. <coughs> I think uh, they've underestimated the impact of COVID and what it can have on the lives of the people because at the end of the day, any leader must... Uh, uh, his focus should be on pa the health, uh, pa paramount health, health of the, pe uh, in the people of this country should be of paramount importance and you should never gamble with people's lives. But we see that happening and also if you take uh, the uh, ministry of the GMOA repeatedly saying that we need to go into a lockdown but the government saying that there can be economic uh, downturn. But then again we also question there was the first wave. Couldn't the government have planned if had had we had to go to another lockdown? What the economic implications uh, would have been to the country? Now, uh, one of the uh, fundamental arguments they bring in is uh, we can't go into a lockdown because there are daily wage earners. How do we sustain? So then I'd like to ask the question, was there any scientific analysis that was done? Had we go into a lockdown, how much money is required to feed these people? And, you know, this kind of uh, effort, a scientific approach to managing the pandemic, 
uh, we, fe we felt was not brought in and uh, which I think is the result uh, which we are seeing right now. But uh, I don't want to be a traitor towards my country. All I hope is that this government comes out of it and the officials and with the ministry officials, the virologists, the experts, they all work together because we need to understand that this is a pandemic situation. It is not time to play politics with the pandemic. It is time to secure the lives of the people and that should be the key focus of the government. Uh, Chris, uh we, we, we do see this, uh, uh, one of the key issues that we see on the ground, uh, forget about the politics of other things, uh, the health ministry, the people who are vaccinating, you know, the whole line is, is in a disarray where we don't see uh, coordination efforts. That one point, what Lehini said, uh, is valid. We see long queues at vaccination centers and then we... Uh, uh, we don't have the uh, you know number of vaccines for all the people. It's not just you know available. So w w how do you respond to Lihini? What's the truth right now? See, Mahesh, uh, I guess by Lihini coming out and saying that this is totally in a disarray, I would have to disagree with her. Of course, there are you know the first of all, don't forget that Sri Lanka is one of the first countries to start beginning vaccination. Now we saw the opposition at the time saying. Uh, why aren't you vaccinating the people? What's happening? You know all these things, and then we we did not come to a harsh decision. We we played it by ear. We took our time. We we decided. We waited for the scientific evidence to come out. Then we started you know, inoculating the populations. Of course, now there's a shortage in AstraZeneca due to the Indian uh, problem, and the government is in immediate measures. Uh, I was talking to a few officials today. They are they are in the process of procuring the uh, vials to come in. Now the planning of this, of course. The, the Ministry of Health, This the main decision comes from the Epidemi Epidemiology Unit. So they are for, the vaccination. for vaccination. So Epidemiology Unit will decide according to uh, details given by the uh, uh, sources, that, their, their sources that inform them. And they decide which ward, which area, which area is high risk, which areas will become high risk and how, how this information comes in. So that's according to how, how the platform is laid out. Now, in, in, to add to that, the government, now we saw a, a lot, so some people in line, some people have, so to, to take that off, Honorable Namal Rajapaksha uh, speared a team to, with, along with the ICTA to have uh, an app developed so people don't have to stand in line. And also we have different ministries. For example, you take the local government ministry, of course there's, there is a po political rub that, that happened. But now the local government ministry, the secretary to the minister, the ministers, they are all in touch with this vaccination program. You get the Samudhi ministry, you get this, uh, you know, the, the, the health ministry. All these ministries are come, come into a combined uh, work area now. And the, the, the platform is running very, it, by this week, uh, towards the end of this week, we'll be able to run on a very smooth uh, layout. And One of the uh, th key questions people have is, okay, I'm not vaccinated uh, and I want to get vaccinated. How am I going to do that? Uh, uh, initially, the, the, the response from the government, uh, health officials rather was, uh, you know, we will come and inform you. If your area is high, at high risk, we will inform you. But then, you know, you wait, 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 and suddenly you hear an announcement saying, you know, go to this particular place, get your vaccine. No, my, no, no that, that also has been discussed and that has also been streamlined. The, there will be measures taken to inform the people through social media, through uh, WhatsApp, through, through all, to all sorts of media, saying tomorrow this area, these are the wards that will be inoculated, these are the token systems. So all these systems have come in place. If you are registered through the system, you will come in place. It's just that we need to get technically sound with, with the app because you are talking of you know 20 million people yeah. being inoculated. So that has to come in and that's that's where the, the, the temporary holdback is, the drawback is. Oh, before I get to Charindra, uh, do we have enough vaccines to vaccinate We've the We've already world? procured 30 million vials. So that's, but are that's, they here? That, now, uh, we had uh, 180,000 come in last week. They we're having another 2 million come in by uh, the beginning of the June. So the, the flow of vaccines will continue to come in. China has come forward and supported us. So the, there's, and the Chinese government agreed to give us 500,000 more vials from 600,000 what they gave before. So 1.1 million vials been donated by the government of China. Likewise, we have so many other people coming forward and supporting the vaccination pledge. And also, um, Mahesh, I must say this, it's not only the vaccination thing. We saw as to how the uh, 
opposition criticized the movement of uh, having 10,000 beds uh, that is organized. So these are intermediate facilities that are placed to the people. So, you know, criticizing such moves and saying, you know, what, uh, what we are doing is not correct, that we could have set up ICUs, we could have done this. This 10,000 beds are if for intermediate facilities. And, uh, you know, all we saw is criticism coming from the government's, uh, the opposition side. And no constructive work was given towards the uh, move, movement of uh, the inoculations and how we are going to, how we are going to tackle the uh, vaccines in time to come. Charindra, what's your take on, on the vaccination efforts, the COVID drive right now, what's happening in this country, you know, seems like uh, we're losing the plot. Um, I don't know whether we can still say we are losing the plot, but I think there is a lot, uh, a lot of coordination that can be done better and a lot uh, better organizing can, uh, I mean, we, we can wish for something far better. Uh, I don't think the government has lost control of this as yet. However, they are edging towards that and that's worrying, right? Because um, uh, one thing the government has to understand is that uh, transparency and, and giving out the actual information to the people is important in this case. If, as some people say, the figures that are put out are not correct, right? Um, I, I personally don't have evidence to back that up, so I'm not going to make that allegation myself. But if, as some people are saying, that you're, is you're the case. talking about the death toll. Let's say, let's say the death toll, right? In that case, what is uh, important that the government to understand is that this is one of those situations where panic is not necessar mm -hmm. not necessarily a bad thing. Panic or, or fear is probably a good thing in this case because you stay at home, you'll be you know, uh, you'll take care of yourself and people around you. Um, if people take it easy, right, if you have a sense of uh, security around this whole thing because, let's say, the count is low and all that, that is actually, that may be counterproductive, right? So what uh, the country and uh, the government needs is actual numbers being put out and the actual situation, the gravity of the situation being told to the people. Because if not, they, they can control this in terms of statistics for a while, but after that, there will be a sudden explosion, and that happened in India, right? And we don't want to go there. So that's one thing, transparency and giving out the actual, actual, actual accurate figures. Uh, secondly, in terms of the vaccination drive, because we're focusing on that, uh, I have a bit of sympathy with the government because uh, it's not easy, right? So, uh, same as controlling the uh, pandemic was not easy, vaccination is not easy because there are demands from all over the place, right? Now, we live in Colombo and we know what the actual situation is in terms of uh, the, the demand from certain people that you know, right? So, even with certain uh, favoritism going on, even with certain people being, you know, pushed to the front of the line, I'm guessing that is about 10 or 20 percent of the actual demand they get from people to push uh, them to the front of the line. So I have a bit of sympathy with the government, but there could have been a lot more coordination. And, and my fundamental point is it should never have got to this stage, yeah. right? If they had listened to the, What's the... What is this stage that you're talking about? The current stage. It should never have got to the current stage, Manish, because, uh, see, you have to... Uh, if you if you don't know a, a subject, right? Um, I, I If I don't know something, I would listen to the people that know. But that's exactly what's happening right yeah. now. The I, 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 the don't, I don't believe that uh, is happening exactly. Reason? So, for example, um, there was a statement made um, that there is no actual communication to the government to impose a lockdown and that this uh, all this is being yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is something even uh, the army commander was here uh, about a week and a half back. And what he said was, everybody, everybody who says we have to lock down, we have to do this, we have to do that, is telling in the media. Nobody is sitting at that meeting and telling the government, the president, the, 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 the head of the, uh, uh, you know, COVID operations center, you know, they're not telling at that, those meetings and they're absent. Like all, if you take the biggest criticism, right, it's come from the Sri Lanka Medical Association right now saying, Lock down the country for yeah. none of those people ha are, are going and uh, saying that, that is Mahesh, those uh, That is Mahesh. Unfortunately, that is factually incorrect okay. because um, so this statement was made by the uh, army commander on the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, about two days ago. 
um, the letter a letter was sent to the president and uh, I mean in, in all the stakeholders or at least to the president right um, asking for a two week lockdown it's, See, it's now, written no, down no, no, no so wait initially you're asking people who knows about this which is the health officials which is the people who are running the uh, the event they have to be uh, you know they are the people who needs to take the decision and then you go and write to the president the president is a political figure in this country he but can obviously pass it down uh, uh, to uh, um, that that i'm pretty sure he that's exactly what he does but why is not i mean the question that i have is or if you're criticizing yeah fine that's okay the understandable yes we have a problem but then why aren't you saying that I, what they do is they come for voice cuts. No, that, okay. is, exactly. that is incorrect. That is but incorrect, but uh, Mahesh, now th there is a there is an undeniable point that I am making, right? Which is that a letter was sent, right? So when a letter is sent, you can't then say that no communication was made. Right? But you just said that letters were sent to the president. Yes. yes. But here is the army commander who is the head of the COVID operation saying that it was not communicated to him. So the, the, see. No, he, he, he actually said that it was not communicated to the president as well. But say, if, if your point is that there's no point talking to the politicians, right? First of all, culturally with Sri Lanka, that really doesn't hold water as far True. as I'm concerned because in Sri True. Lanka it is a politician. But, but, but we are not in a culturally Can. sensitive uh, <laughs> situation right now. We are Can I place. bring the argument of Dr. Sudarshini Fernando Pula repeatedly saying, I mean, she has been making certain statements about the importance of locking down and she has been giving out alarming figures. And, and she's see, also in this in this particular committee. And also this particular letter which Arinda was talking about, it was sent to the president and president also sits on those meetings. So you can't have like a blind eye say, look, I was not informed formally. There is enough communication there is data scientific data that is out there it is the what I see is the lack of the, the political uh, will to understand and listen to these authorities and having then having then that you know then I then know it no, all but approach me, but actually here's the here's the thing Mahesh and Chris right I have a lot of sympathy with the government for not wanting to lock down because I personally don't believe the country can country can handle that lockdown. is not the solution that, and that is yes, something that, that is not the solution repeatedly said. that is not the solution but so while I have sympathy with no. the government for that I absolutely cannot understand what they did during the festive season, right? I, I can't, I really can't understand that. The fact that there were restrictions being called for and yet nothing was done, right? And this is repeated who, calls. Who is it, should is take it, is responsibility it the government that is for to blame? Is, is it the government yes. that should blame for who, the, uh, the, the people's misconduct? No, who should be blamed for this? Uh, because all I'm saying is, now here we are, we walked into the studio with our masks on, we sanitized ourselves, we came here. We saw during oh, the new year. Also. Okay, <laughs> we we came uh, and uh, okay, we all came here in the scene. during the festive season. We saw how indisciplined people were. No, that, that Sri Lanka has a problem where the people yeah. are highly indisciplined. No, it, so it, you can't you can't blame see, the government fair, Chris, for, for, you to blame for the, acts, the people. acts of the people. <laughs> no, 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 in a way, you have to be we have to be we are rational and it, you know. It is not fair for you to blame it on the, the, the people. The government put proper control. I don't have to stop something. What I don't understand here is where. The opposition says lockdown. Then the moment we lock down, they say open the country. <laughs> then they say lockdown. No. So this is very confusing. Yeah. See, so the opposition, the, but, but, but I'm not speaking as a, as a government. As a government, <laughs> that is a our, political our, thing. our main motive is to go in for rapid vaccinations. Hmm. So, but yeah. then so we they saw how China has not purchased the vaccines. We have time. already procured no, it. Right now, but when, we, we when during the first wave, was, when the opposition leader issue. was uh, repeatedly asking oh. at that time, the government the, has the had no plan of purchasing vaccines. Chloroquine. Okay, that was his recommendation. But uh, what everything the government has been doing up to uh, up to this point is delayed. Even during the Aurudu session, they could have they could have given certain guidelines, but they said no, uh, we will but not really, impose. You can't, you can't you can't point a finger at the government. The government it, has done every single no, step to do this. Who takes but don't responsibility? Forget, who don't, takes responsibility for exactly this? Exactly my to point. The, to the when, particular when, situation. When 97 right times that the government was warned, warned during your time. The, you, all See, the Easter bombings are happening. That, that, that's why the times. government changed and gave okay. the power to you. You said you have the no, no, scientific no, no. tools and the data and the analytics to change, govern this country, but there is no science was, in the manner in which the, the pandemic the, the, is being the, controlled. The, the government I mean, changed and he did not come with uh, the Easter bombings. It happened before that. Yeah, but the but political yeah, turmoil happened before that. You and I both came in 2018 to the local the government the elections in 2018 through through the changes. It's not because of Easter bombings. Easter bombings came afterwards. It's pointless. Okay, so don't make an excuse. But I'm saying we can. 
poor planning, poor planning and policy making is from your side. Uh, we, we really need to uh, take a short commercial break. Uh, we're discussing about the vaccination efforts uh, right now, the current situation in Sri Lanka. Uh, the panel is here, Charindu Chandrasena from The Morning, um, Lini Fernando from the SJB and also Chris Balthasar from the SLPP. You're watching Get Your Next Story. Welcome back, everyone, to Get Real Extra. I'm in conversation with my panel, uh, Sharon Chandrasena from uh, The Morning. He's the chief editor there. Lady Fernando from the SJB. And also Chris Balthasar from the SLPP. We've been talking about the uh, government's current efforts with regard to the vaccination program and how what's the strategy that they have opted to go on with to uh, you know, lock down the country. The opposition is claiming that uh, failures have been made. Uh, in, in, in responding uh, much faster. I want to start uh, uh, with Charindra um, with regard to, you know, you were making a point saying, you know, you, you, right now everything was too late uh, a, a bit, uh, but then what do you think? What's the way forward right now? Uh, right now it looks like vaccination because uh, we have to basically follow the U.S. system, right? So U.S. was the epicenter uh, of the entire pandemic for a good two two months at least, maybe three. Uh, that was during the last stages of the Trump presidency. So uh, the problem there was that he was anti-mask almost, right? So he was discouraging people from wearing masks. Uh, he was only talking about a vaccine coming and then to his credit, he got it developed, right? But that came in too late, you know, for a lot of people who died. But basically, uh, then when Joe Biden came in, he actually failed to uh, sort of establish a, a mask policy or anything because over there it's about freedoms and all that, right? So what he did was vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. So what he, I think he got around 100 million mm -hmm. people vaccinated in about 60 something days, uh, which is a, a f amazing figure, right? Remarkable figure. Uh, but of course, America can do that, right? We can't do it at that scale or anything anything close to that. But even in our small scale, right? Because see, now at the moment we have vaccinated 1.75, I mean 1.75 million doses have been given total. That's, uh, the first, uh, that's, that's, first. that's first and second included. The fully vaccinated number is only 323,000, right? So say fully vaccinated 1.5% of the population, total population. So we, have to vaccinate about uh, 16 million, right, as a base figure, right, to be uh, called safe. 20 million is a target. A target, but say at least 16 million, right? So to have some sense of uh, safety. So we are, a f we are a long way away from that uh, target. So at the moment, what is needed is a concerted effort and a focus on vaccination. I don't know how the government with its current finances, right, can manage to get down so many vaccines, but maybe put everything aside and then focus on vaccines because that's what uh, they've done. Financially, uh, 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 I want you to, yeah, exactly. Now all these vaccines that I, I think around uh, how, what's 30, it, million. 30 million has been secured, secured. financially, right? Financially, it's yes. not like you're not negotiating, right? Yeah, no, it's not. It's already been secured. When, when, so when the procurement is done. Yeah. It's just that, you know, the supply has to come in. So we are waiting for the supply to come in and gradually, you know, every, every, see, it's not only Sri Lanka who's ordering this and it's not mm -hmm. only uh, the suppliers who are giving it to Sri Lanka. So, you know, there's so many uh, countries that are in demand for this. You see how in India, AstraZeneca is not being, covered. it's not coming out because of that. So now they've gone for alternative production. So until the manufacturers go in for alternative production, then the securing, the, the, the import of it is going to take time. But Luckily, because of this government's ability in, in foreign relations, we've been able to bring in vaccines as fast as possible. You know, so now you take uh, the COVAX. Uh, after the virus that came in, we've, we are yet to get it. That's the you know, COVAX is what gives the whole world the, 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 they distribute it. But because of the government's ability, we've been able to talk to Russia. Russia has been, they gave, they gave us a Sputnik vials. China has been coming in. Apart from that, we've secured it. 
we are getting Pfizer, we are getting all, all these, all Aye. these, all these vaccines are coming in. Five million vials of Pfizer have been uh, uh, been procured, and it's not only that China. You have to think of the internal logistics also. Now these these. I disagree with you there when you said governments' relationships that you've been able to secure the vaccines. Can I ask you this question? Why have you all not been able to uh, get the remaining AstraZeneca vaccines? Because, because from even countries, we, no, from even countries, there are certain countries no, that have saw, AstraZeneca no, 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 virus in no, excess. No, Lini, no, the no, only no, me, only country that just, we can just give me one second. Now we saw your uh, Sadit Premdas speak to the Russian ambassador. We saw him going on a spree of talking yeah, to him. That is what? <laughs> tell me one thing that you all were able to bring to this country. He, he, he Nothing. Has, no, he has Nothing been at able, all. No, were he, you all even able to give a, donate a bed to an ICU? No. All you all did was sit back and talk. No, that that is that, that is, is a, that, 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 no, that is clearly that is clearly I all have gone wrong. Sajid Premdas has we been donating. Have used let me correct you there. Sajid Premdas has been donating equipment to hospitals under That's his on campaign. Call. That's on a personal. That's on a personal. No, but he, he has been doing. He he has been uh, campaigning. He donated fifty thousand rupees to temples yeah. and churches. No, and no, he has been he has been giving equipment to hospitals even when when they don't have equipment. As a position, whatever you all you all said, we stand back. We will not politicize. We will stand back and we'll defend, no, we will defend. We have we'll help repeatedly the offered government. our contributions, okay. assisted the government. Say we what will. What have you offered? offered? You have offered zilch. No, we have, have not done so anything for this. See, the thing is, this you all, is, all you all did was sit back and criticize. It is not in our mandate. People have given you the mandate to rule this country. It's just that the role of the opposition, the opposition has been bringing it to your attention, and the government has this been failing, failing, pandemic, failing, pandemic. failing to listen to and take corrective this action. Is a global That's pandemic. why it's you cannot, you cannot bring it on the opposition. It's just a mandate of a government, Lini. It's a global pandemic. But, but then together. government, uh, the people who are in power must take control and control uh, uh, manage it effectively, okay. which you all have not been now, doing now to this day. Now you take immoral to your ward, Dihini. Okay, when when the inoculations happen there, you go and represent it there. Yeah. You so so that means you you, you all have the mandate as well, no? Yes, yeah, so as a local government council, you have the mandate. See, but but to who has the final represent. decision making authority? No it is with the president. It is, is with the task force. Movement. It is with the president, president and the task force. What we are repeatedly trying to tell uh, the government is manage this pandemic in a scientific the manner. The powers are diverse. They, local they, government they, they, they manage it in a scientific let manner. Let me jump, jump into that and ask you that same question. The scientific manner, scientific manner. I've been hearing from. From, you know every person but I never heard what exactly does that mean What's uh, the theory? what what are you saying that the government is not doing right now and and uh, if they do it according to the scientific manner then the, this is the result that we they will achieve let me tell you government should listen to the virologists government should listen to the experts take their opinion and you're saying right uh, now uh, take not? their opinion and we, uh, and consult the relevant doctors who have who have the uh, expertise in it what we see right now is a more like a, a military kind of an operation a more arrogant approach versus having empathy towards the people and you know controlling this pandemic now we, we saw this That's whole 10,000 10, beds in 10 days now when you can launch that campaign did you even scientifically think that uh, whether we have the relevant medical staff to handle this no, it's not, it's not just, it, 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 it not, is not, not about, hospitals. what we see right now is the government, this entire pandemic politicizing it versus, you know, having a, having a continuous drive to say prevention is better than cure. That is not the government. That's exactly no. what we are no, doing. That we, are, is we, are, we, are, we are going on rapid vaccination program. Certain controls, but no, you, you let the country go, uh, have, have uh, let people move around, not having particular controls, do you and agree, then you blame do the you, people. Do you agree uh, uh, what uh, Charindra said with regard to America? and their effort right now. Yes. So then America is a place that never locked down their country. Okay, See, there were a lot of lot of uh, efforts made by governors, individual states to lock down uh, certain areas, and it was always done. If it it it, it really, if I if I may use the word shit uh, hits the ceiling, that's the only time that they did it. So th they were more on the fact that let's keep the country running uh, uh, pretty much open, and people were given the responsibility to be safe. See, Mahesh. So, you must we must look at it from Sri Lanka's point of view. How many ICU beds do we have? If we if the numbers increase, do we have the oxygen manufacturing capacity? Do we have the relevant beds? Okay, okay, okay. Do okay, we okay. have the manu so, so, vaccine so, so manufacturing officials, capacity? We don't. Officials of those in the, uh, you know uh, uh, places like the, the the person who's uh, I think the no, minister. No, I, I, I I'd like to ask her. Now she said we don't have the capacity to manufacture oxygen. We don't have the ICU beds. Scientifically, can you prove it to me? No, so the, the, or is it just hearsay that you're mentioning? This is this is, is what the doctors are saying. This is what the doctors are saying. Who's the doctors? Doctors are saying this. Who's I mean, the, the, the GMO or on having the epidemiology unit 
okay dr samitha and and the other epics are the people who consult on see, this vaccination program see, have so you're saying that there is no there, that there is no system but i'm telling you that there is a system that's place what you all are saying is hearsay whatever facts that you all get just to scrutinize no. the government no you all, it is you all, no, you all, no you all, you see you must understand out. the opposition's uh, opposition's objective is not to sabotage anything what the that's government exactly says but done. to bring it so to the attention of the people and is, uh, again if, if there is a shortage see, the government was able to uh, no, procure so 20 Why are, why are the people complaining? Of why are the MD cylinders for for Chris, Chris, you must if, understand if, the people out there are complaining. Are going, if complaining. you are going by the the the, the so you know hearsay. the baseline See, of people complaining, I, I like to ask you this other question. The government the on hearsay words. That's 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 the that's, irresponsibility that's of the government of keeping the country open, letting those U Ukrainian people, Indian people that come to this country. That was in bubble tourism. Yeah. So how many how people dependent on that? No. Oh, see, three hundred thousand. You are not. You are not understanding. Understanding what Sri Lanka is, what is the capability, the capacity Sri Lanka has. It is good to do everything, but then at the end of the day, you all are taking the lives of the people as ransom. The government is gambling with the lives of the people. Now tell me, the Ukrainian this thing, how many people were infected? How many people affected? Aren't we seeing six percent of the of the, of the, of the, of the population depend on tourism? Uh, aren't we seeing ah, results of uh, results of all these uh, irresponsible actions? I want to take a short commercial the break. What, 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 tell me what came in. Uh, I, I think we are going around in circles uh, <laughs> right now. Uh, it's the same <laughs> argument. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. When we return, I want to talk about another uh, event that occurred uh, in, in the past when the Port City uh, Commission bill uh, went through the Parliament and it, it, it got the knock that it required, but with, with changes. After the Supreme Court uh, decided that you know there were clauses which were not uh, in par with the Constitution, are there a panel stake on that? We're watching it real life. Well. everyone to get real extra uh, i'm in conversation with my panel challenger chong jusena from the um, the morning newspaper chief editor there lehni fernando from the sjb and also chris balthasar from uh, the slpp another story that broke out last week and a lot of attention was given was uh, the port city commission bill which went through the parliament and got the the required majority and now it will become effective Uh, Sharindra, I want to get your take on that. Uh, there were main concerns about sovereignty and Sri Lanka's allegiance, and how this entire setup would be, uh, uh, you know, put through. Um, what do you, what do you, what, what's your take? Um, I think it's important to separate the project from the bill, right? So the project, I think, fundamentally, a lot of people are in agreement with that Sri Lanka needs a project like that. Sri Lanka needs uh, sort of an investment destination, uh, which has its own special rules, and and that that concept is, I think, uh, accepted. But the bill is what was seen as uh, going a bit too far in terms of uh, the commission. Uh, yeah, especially the commission. Uh, so that has been rectified with, uh, with the intervention of the Supreme Court. So at the moment, um, once those. Uh, Really, really adverse clauses were taken out or rectified. I think the bill looks okay, right? It's it's not perfect, but this is what we have at the moment, and I think it's a it's a good one to start with. Um, so, I basically what I want to say is some sort of bipartisanship building around this project and uh, this bill, right? Because this is the bill that will dictate and the act now. the act that will dictate uh, the future of that entire project and it is the longest project we have mm. undertaken in sri lanka so it's very important uh, that there is bipartisanship because this could go through three four governments possibly right so if we have a repeat of what happened in 2016 right when uh, the the yahapalan government mm. came there was a stoppage because they were not part of the the formulation of this project um and then one year was lost because this is a valuable project one year was lost and then restarted again uh, with uh, different clauses that they deemed were better um and uh, then now we see it being fast tracked again with this under this government 
So uh, what happens in 2024, 25? If by any chance there is a change in government, right? Does that entire process happen again? One year stoppage and you know, ready, set, go again. We can't, we can't afford that. So I hope that the government stretches out, stretches out its hand and like you know, gets the gets some uh, uh, consensus on this. And also I hope the opposition doesn't just criticize this for the sake of opposition criticism and for the sake of you know having to be on the opposite side of the government, right? Because it's important that they, they come together on this. Because this project, if it's done right, can yeah. do what uh, Dubai uh, DFIC did for Dubai, right? And I hope it does. But but it has to be, they have to play it right. Sha the the onus is on the government. Sharindra was clearly looking at you, Lahini. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, what's your take on this? Yeah, see, now, <laughs> now it's no longer a bill, it's a law. See, I'd like to say this, SJB is not against Sports City. It's just that it's a particular bill that was brought into Parliament. The contents of the bill is what they challenge. So this is an important project, we all agree. But uh, how do we go about with this? Uh, to what extent? Do we sacrifice the sovereignty of the country? Uh, what level of control should the central government have? Now, if it's an economic center, what is the benefit that the central government uh, directly gets out of this? These were some of the main concerns and the controls. Now, uh, I, I like to say a few things. Now, there were certain amendments that were proposed by the SJB uh, to this uh, particular bill in parliament, uh, where this particular commission, now one of the concerns that they had is the president having enormous powers within the commission and the ability to appoint foreigners. And we know that uh, the Supreme Court reversed it and said that there needs to be citizens. But then there also can be foreigners. Now, one of the great concerns is when foreigners sit in there they having the authority to get involved directly in policy making which is questionable secondly not having ex officio members like for example uh, the central bank governor the a representative of the ministry of finance the representative of the uda a representative of central environment authority these are suggestions that were brought which i thought uh, were valid because then there is certain control that the central government has over this now, I, I personally thought that this Port City Bill uh, was an excellent opportunity for Sri Lanka to relook at its certain laws, if laws hinder development, to, to kind of, you know, reverse it. But what we saw with this particular bill is giving enormous powers to this particular function called the Commission, even land authority powers to passing laws, uh, to even uh, granting visas to officials. So the control that the central government, the parliament, the supreme lawmaking authority having is getting loosened. And, uh, Another factor is if you talk of these offshore companies, now offshore companies uh, that are registered elsewhere could also come and take center stage at the port city. And then we saw that they were exempted from the Companies Act and the Banking Act. And there were certain regulations I think in Schedule 2 which says uh, certain the companies there are exempted uh, from the Inland Revenue Act, uh, Exchange Control Act and uh, all, all that regulations were brought in. Uh, 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 schedule 2. So then those, those were certain concerns that were brought in. So and also the whole fact of the Auditor General. Auditor General uh, not having the authority to audit but a foreign auditor coming in. So these were I think were valid Most questions the, that I were mean, brought forward. Questions uh, would be valid but, but the thing is uh, most of what the Port City was trying to do is to uh, streamline our laws which were like you know centuries old and try to give a, a new way where foreign investors Agreed. because this particular project is not for local investors per se we want to get the foreign investors Agreed. and they're not even looking at sri lanka first thing they look at is labor laws no Gone. agree they, mahesh they uh, but don't even want to come see here. what what you need to understand is also for an investor to come and invest it has to be a, a regulatory environment where you build investors confidence now if there is a particular indication that the, this particular uh, p p place is going to be a money laundering haven or a place that so is going to be going to uh, if, if that was it that was, was uh, if, that the was american ambassador's uh, that is that is the interpretation of the american ambassador no uh, don't forget the money laundering Act was bought in 2006 by Mahindra Raja. Yeah, so wait, let me okay. correct you there. Now, one of the concerns initially before it went to Supreme Court, uh, the Bribery Act was uh, was not applicable, but then uh, Supreme Court came back and said, so the, the uh, application of these offshore companies being exempted from B Banking Act, then the Financial Transactions Reporting Act, these were these were alarming concerns because for an investor to come and invest, they need to have that confidence. You mean we don't, Chris, I'll give you the last word. In the, uh, it, it was exempted. Uh, offshore companies were exempted from uh, the Banking Act and the Companies Act, the applicability was exempted. Is that so? Yes.
because on on, on uh, section 74 uh, i can i can quote uh, to that it they, was exempted they, all, all these uh, boards uh, and all these authorities are part on the this thing uh, I, i would uh, give you the last word to respond to lehini what is clause 49 clause 49 clause 49 clause 49 So, see, Mahesh, it's you have to take. There's about 5,000 economic zones like this in the world, of which uh, only 146 are actively functioning. So, Sri Lanka, this is basically we we we, we initial stage. No sooner this government came, we were able to secure 1.5 billion dollars mm -hmm. as an investment portfolio to this target to go into 4 billion and then 15 billion annually. So, this on the outside of it is is an ideal opportunity for the country to come out of our foreign debt and you know restructure the country. So in doing so, what I say is, Dini. Now, for example, you and I would know this. For example, if if we have to submit a housing plan to the local government, you know that we have to get 13 approvals from the water board, electricity board, uh, UDA, RDA at times. So these different entities, when it comes into this, and that's where the government brought in a bill to break this one-stop shop solution for investors, and it's attractive. Now we have the board of investment that runs in the country. How many actual investments will come in, and how how difficult it is to get mm -hmm. it through. so this is why you know we have to come up with this solution and also the government knew for a fact that this is this will be challenged now when the 20th amendment came we saw you and rasika going to courts as well <laughs> and challenging it okay likewise the government knew that people like you will come and go, go ahead with this so we saw the sjb we saw the jp all of them collectively going to supreme court so we basically it was it was a, we 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 even so we could have bulldozed our way and got got it with two thirds majority no the government took its stance can i ask you a and question and we listened we listened to the supreme court we, thereby we as abiding citizens law abiding as a law abiding government who does not dictate terms to the supreme court I we 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 agreed to what they had to say and we passed can, it in can i can i can i, can I, can I say all, this all we could have passed it with a, with a majority we had 150 it was actually 152 votes two votes that were not counted So these collectively. Uh, Chris, uh, Mahesh, was there any uh, reason for the timing, timing of the, of the bill? bill? That's my question. Uh, see, uh, con uh, Supreme Court will only look at the constitutionality of this, but then this is an economic bill. There's a business sense, sense to it. There should have been public opinion. There should have been consultations. Oh, Why the hurry? It hour. was brought into Parliament on the 18th. Uh, 1920th debated. Why was it a hurry? What was the hurry? Because, why why because wasn't I, I, I mean, uh, I asked this time question, given? I asked this question from the uh, uh, assistant managing director of of uh, this uh, project, who is Yalu Bihari. This was supposed to be. This entire bill was supposed to be done and dusted back in 2017, because the the country was looking at being ready uh, for to accept investors, because this bil bill was a hurdle. Not being able to in, uh, attract the investors uh, that no, they but want. But Maybe, then, let but then, me, let me ask you now. You are saying <coughs> why in a hurry? But then why, why were you all in such a hurry to give the Hambantar Airport away within two days? Bring it in Parliament, <laughs> finish it off. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all the time we have uh, right now. We were veering off towards an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently managed to wrangle it back thank you very much for watching that's all the time we have i want to thank my panel charanjit chandrasena the chief editor at the morning newspaper uh, and also um lee fernando tenet law uh, from the sjb uh, and also a municipal councilor um chris baltasar also from the sl uh, municipal council thank you very much uh, lee and chandran uh, for his uh, as usual the lively debate that i always expected to be Thank you very much for watching. That's all the time we have for you uh, tonight. Well, stay positive. Just like that. I'll be right back next time. Good night.